everybody, it's Sue here. Are you ready to move on to week four in our book, The Deborah Anointing by Michelle McLean Walters? Hasn't this been a rich and wonderful Bible study? I'm about ready to drop my Bible. We, this week, are going to be looking at chapters 5 and 6 and a little bit of 7. But she concludes, which is our today lesson on Monday, in chapter 5, again, that whole thought about Deborah being a honeybee. Remember, the name Deborah means honeybee. And what Michelle does in our study of God's Word is we become men and women with a Deborah anointing to reach our generation, to do spiritual warfare, and to really fulfill our call and destiny that God has put on our lives, not the one of our own choosing, but the one He has given us, that we need to walk in that sweet spirit of a honeybee. She compares honeybees with wasps, and honeybees are sweet. They make honey. They, they create, you know, honey has been a sweetener for ages on end, for the nations, as it were. And there's many other attributes. And the one we look at today about a honeybee is that they are agitators for change. And what she likens it to, and it's so powerful, is you can have a room full of people, a little honeybee, one little honeybee will walk, come fly into that room and you can watch a crowd of people clear quickly. Now, we can agitate for harm or for our own selfish motives and ambitions. That's not what she's talking about. She's talking about being an agitator for change in the power of the Holy Spirit to bring the kingdom of heaven to bear on earth. And with that that anointing, that Deborah anointing, come many wonderful qualities. And I list them today in Monday's Bible study. And this is just a few from the list. And I asked the question, where, where do you need work? Where do I need work? And I answered the question, but let me give you some of them. Are you a self-starter? Are you resourceful? Are you productive, persistent? Are you results-oriented? And are you responsible? That's just maybe a third of the list. And you will find the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart on areas where He wants to hone and do His work so that we will be that wonderful agitator of change where He has called us to love and to minister the uh, power and grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is a really, really sweet lesson. Now, one thing I personally felt like I wanted to bring out from that, one of the biggest hindrances for us from fulfilling for or say that again from fulfilling God's call on our lives so what I'm saying is the things that will keep us bound that keep us down and not able to move forward in the Lord in our own lives and then even fulfilling his purposes one of those things is the spirit of self-pity now self-pity is crippling you would not you'd be surprised over the years of counseling how many people have fallen into just a stagnant place or a place of just not moving forward because they've allowed self-pity and it's be, they've allowed it so much that it has become their very identity that's how they get attention if that might be you today because i really felt like the lord impressed this on my heart personally it's not in the book that you have given place to woe is me and it's all my fault and I'm a victim. You know what? We have played into the enemy's hands and the hands of the flesh. Self-pity is dangerous because it allows us to start up unhealthy behaviors to medicate the pain that we feel and we will feel even just in these unhealthy uh, behaviors because we have self-pity. I deserve to do such and such. I deserve to take this uh, substance or indulge in pornography or have this unhealthy relationship because so much wrong has happened to me. Can I tell you self-pity is the antithesis of the power of the Lord in your life. Self-pity is saying God isn't enough. He isn't greater. He isn't able to work all things together to, for good, like Romans 8, 28 tells us. It takes us, we need to repent of that. Can I say this is a serious sin and it'll keep us down for the count. Don't let it. 
Do immediate work with the Lord. Recognize it. Repent of it. That means turn. Change the way you think about it. Resist it. And ask for the power of the Holy Spirit to start to walk in what He has for you and not those old, old thought patterns that you've allowed in your life. Just a thought there. Again, Michelle, in our study, brings out the differences between a wasp and a honeybee. And a, one thing about a wasp is that they will attack. They can sting and sting and sting again, whereas a honeybee can only sting once. Praise the Lord. Can we say that? But what a honeybee does is they can create honey, and a wasp cannot do that. And we go into a chapter, it's chapter 6, I believe, about the prophetic nature of Deborah. It says in God's word, she was a prophetess. And I want to talk a little bit about personal prophecy. Personal prophecy is when you or someone gives to you a word that they sense that the Lord has put on their heart or on your heart to either foretell or foretell something about someone or a situation or a group of people. Now, prophecy is a Holy Spirit gift that is all over the New Testament. Obviously, God, Lord Jesus himself, spoke prophetic words. But we see it throughout the book of Acts, and we see it in Paul's letters, Peter's letters, and James. Prophecy is often a word of encouragement from the Lord for a person now. It can be, that would be a forth telling word. It can be a word of correction in love, but it's from the Lord. And it's not just from a human perspective. Um, that's a forth telling word saying it's a now word, a now thing to bring encouragement or to really bring encouragement to repentance. Or it's always done in love. Even the most difficult words are done in the spirit of love, in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the Lord. And a foretelling word would be something in the future. I actually, last night, felt like God gave me a word for, we had a fam for a gentleman. We had a family come visit. He's taking a new position in ministry. And immediately I got a picture of a sun rising uh, and the horizon. And it was a word, the Lord is opening new horizons for you. Be, uh, you know, be aware of them and be sure to walk through the um, now, the thing is, so that was a foretelling word. This was encouraging now, but I was saying something that's going to happen in the future. But with any personal prophecy or any prophet that calls themselves a prophet, you know, can I just say, you take it at face value. You do not take every word that come to, comes down from somebody, even someone you highly respect. It has to speak directly to you from the Lord. It usually confirms something you already know. Uh, it will always line up with the Word of God. But how, how many times the Word of God can be used for harm because it's not done in the spirit of Deborah, in the spirit of a honeybee. It's not with sweetness. There is um, there is a real way to use the Word of God to hurt people, and that is not its intent. The Word of God always brings healing, encouragement, and restoration, even when it's a difficult word. So when somebody, even if it's somebody I greatly respect, and they give a word, personal word for me or a word in general, I don't just receive it without really going to the Lord and saying, is this from you? Most of the time, I shelve almost every word, literally every word people give me. And I get a lot in the place where the Lord's given me in ministry. Not that it's so big, but I get a lot of words. I shelve them. If, if it resonates with me, I put it before the Lord. It is, if it's from Him, it will come to pass. But I am careful, and we need to be careful too. And we can get so excited about things that are not from the Lord. We really have to go to Him and really know the Word of God for ourselves so that we're not deceived in any way. So she goes into Deborah is a prophetess, and she talks about how she knew ahead of time what was going to take place in the battle, and that was a God-given gift that brought encouragement and strength. And those are the kind of words I want to hear. Let me read you a passage out of Isaiah 50. I love this. It's Isaiah 50, verse 4. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He awakens me. The Lord awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear 
to hear as the learned. I love that thought of waking up in the morning in my quiet time, getting a fresh word for myself and from for maybe another person that I will hear from him. And that's, that's the power of walking with Jesus, getting to know his voice, what it sounds like, and what his word has to speak into a situation. Then finally, on Friday, we are, begin chapter 7, and it talks about the collaboration Deborah had with Barak, that he, uh, he and her go to battle together. She tells him to go, he invites her to come, and she goes with him. And ladies and men, we cannot be lone rangers in the kingdom of God. Oh, my washer just went off. Um, we need each other. There is safety in numbers. There's accountability in numbers. There's encouragement in numbers. And you know what? That old self-pity will rise up, going back to that spirit I talked about a few minutes ago, and it'll want to isolate us, want to separate us. And that makes us so vulnerable to the enemy's attacks and, and the will of our flesh. But we were made to be the body of Christ, joined together. My nose needs my neck. My neck needs my shoulders. My shoulders need my arms. You know, we need each other. And that's what Deborah will teach us as we start to go into chapter seven. You're going to love this part of the study. And uh, as we close down the weeks and then we'll take a summer break, it's just been so great to have you and join you with, join with me in studying God's word. Let's close in prayer. Lord, I just thank you for what we're learning what you're speaking to many of us, what you're doing that is so wonderful in these trying times that we live in. God, you are raising up a people who will show your, forth your glory and bring many rescue and restoration and hope and salvation. And we know, Lord, that we can't do anything without you. It's got to be you all the time working through us. And so, Lord, we humble ourselves before you and teach us this week in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. And uh, let's open God's word together.